week? Yes? Did everybody have fun? Yes? Well, we really thank you for coming and being with us this week, and we hope that you will take back something that you've learned from all of our teachers. I know they did a great job working with you, and I really do hope you've enjoyed your week. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things. Our teachers are going to give out their certificates, and I think they're are a couple of classes that have a little something they want to do and then we have our music that Miss Jessica has been working this week with you that uh, she is going to have y'all come up and all get together and do your music together okay so we're going to start with our baby class and let them come up and give out their certificates <laughs> I had the baby's class, and our kids were Aaliyah Smith, (laughs) (laughs) Kaylin. Noah Jackson. Don't come over here. Go stand over there. Go stand over there. Jada Smith. And Jasmine Smith. Next, we had our kindergarten class, and Miss Carrie was our teacher. Our class had a lot of fun this week. We only had, I had four kids one night, and the rest of the week we just had two or three, but we had lots of fun. I had Michaela Jackson. And I also had Trinity Campbell, Jimmy Breedlove, and Alexa Walker, but they couldn't be with us tonight. Yeah. Next we had Miss Casey, and she had first and second grade. I had first and second, and my kids was Emily Ann, I don't know her last name, Emily Ann. And Christian Jackson. And Ethan Ross, but he's not here tonight. Next, we had third and fourth grade, and Miss Megan was the teacher. I'd like to say that I love the Lord, and I've had a lot of fun. It's been an experience because I've never taught before, but we had fun. We had one save this week that she's not here tonight, so... 
They're going to do something for y'all, and then I'm going to hand out our certificate. They're going to tell y'all the ABC. A, Adam, to God, <laughs> admit to God that you are a sinner. B, believe that Jesus is God's son. C, confess your faith in Jesus, Savior, and Lord. Madison. Our last group was a large group. It was our preteen class, and Miss Teresa was our teacher. And so I think they're going to do something also, so they can come up now.
Savannah Rose. Y'all got anything y'all want to say? Anybody? Okay, thank y'all. Kids, y'all just come back up here. We're going to have all the kids come up here. And Miss Jessica's going to sit here on the front so that you can do your dance up here.
I do that. Don't tell me we got to Y'all have fun this week. Yeah. Each night we try to share a little bit of the gospel with the kids before we left, and we'll do the same thing this evening. We'll we'll give an altar call here in a few minutes. I'll try not to tax your patience very long. Uh, let me say this: it's it's a privilege to have the parents here tonight, and it's good to have those kids back. Some of them's been here all week, and we sure do appreciate that. It's very humbling. Uh, for us, I, I, I begin to think over there, sitting on the bench a little bit ago <clears throat> that uh, I don't know if I've ever been part of a vacation Bible school quite so good. It wasn't because of the teachers. It wasn't because my wife was the director. It sure enough, wasn't because of me. Uh, but I can't think of a Bible school where I can sit back and say we've seen three or four saved. <sighs> If, if, if you can sit back and see three or four kids saved, you've had a success. Amen. Uh, I, I, as we try to talk to these kids through this week, and as some of them would come up and uh, ask us questions, and, and as they would begin to seek out about salvation and uh, seek out about how to find the Lord, uh, I find myself always in a, in a bad spot because... My biggest fear is to guide them in the wrong direction. And so I, I would always tell them that it was not up to me, it was up to God, that God had to save them, it had nothing to do with me. But most of all, that the Spirit of God had to draw them. Uh, I, I, I'm not trying to talk down on nobody or say anything negative about folks, but as a 13-year-old boy, I had somebody tell me that I was saved and I went my life for 10 years thinking I was alright off of what that man said. And that just was not the case. Uh, I'll say this, I never had the drawing power of God in my life. So, I believe you've got to know your loss before you can be saved. Uh, and I believe these kids, I, I, and I'll, I'll go a step further, I never did tell the kids that professed salvation this week that they were saved. I wouldn't do that. I asked them if anything happened and they would tell me. And that's a good sign right there. But I, I do pray that you'll pray for us just for a few minutes. I know uh, this is it's been a long week. I know a lot of folks is probably hungry. I, I done heard the kids saying, well, we're hungry. <laughs> so we'll, we'll try not to be very long, but I do want to go through the Scriptures just for a minute. Uh, normally I would just kind of sit up here and talk, but I begin to dig in the Bible this evening, this afternoon after we get off of work, and begin to think about the Scriptures that we use for this vacation Bible school. Uh, we can all see it. It's right there on the wall. And the people from the church know I, I, I get, I'm a slow starter. I'm very nervous standing up here a lot of times. Uh, but I, I do want to read just a few verses of Scriptures and give you just a simple thought and, and, and give you a chance to come pray. I believe the greatest thing in our walks of life is to be saved. There's nothing better. 
There's nothing better in this thing to be, than to be saved. I, I've tried everything in this walks of life. I, I say everything, but I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase that to about everything. I've tried, I've tried just about everything to try to fill up the void uh, that we have in our hearts and our in our lives when we don't have the Lord in it. And none of them's fulfilling enough as what it is for when God's in the midst of things. Uh, but in Psalms, in the 147th chapter, we'll, we'll read a little bit before and a little bit after the verse of our uh, of the verse of the Bible school this week. Uh, I, I appreciate the teachers, appreciate my wife doing what she's did. Uh, we're we're kind of new to this, and so you pray for us. Uh, the Bible says this: Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises under our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is commonly. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcast of Israel. Uh, he healeth the broken and in hearted, and bindeth up the wounds. He telleth the numbers of the stars. He calleth them by their names. Great is our Lord, and great uh, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifted up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises unto the harp, uh, unto our God, who covereth the heavens with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse, or taketh not pleasure in the legs of man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear Him and those that hope in His mercy. And that's as far as I want to read this evening. We realize and know that it was that uh, fifth verse, and I'll read it again, that that our vacation Bible school was gathered around. The Bible says, Great is our Lord, and of great power His understanding is infinite. And I begin to ponder on these Scriptures this afternoon and begin to think about things in my life where God's come in the midst of it and begin to think about the times that God just showed up and showed out. And, and listen, you may disagree with me, but I believe the greatest thing that God ever did was save my soul. And if you're saved and uh, uh, born and bought by the precious blood of the Lamb, that's the greatest thing that's ever happened to you. I, I believe it like this, that in one place uh, over in the book of Psalms it, or in the book of Romans, I believe, uh, the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the Gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation. Uh, and listen, I realize and know that in this folks of life and in these days of times, folks don't like the Gospel. Folks want uh, to shun it. They want to go out and they want to do their own things and they want to live their life like they want to live it. Uh, but I'll say this, that when we get things right in our hearts with the Lord, our desires will change. I believe that God will set up an abode in our hearts and our lives, and I believe He'll put a different desire in us. But the Bible says in one place that old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying this. Uh, when we let the power of God rain down in our hearts and our lives, uh, listen, I, I want to say this. Uh, most folks know me and they know that I used to be a drunk. And uh, Listen, I used to smoke a lot of pot. and I, I used to do things in this walks of life. Uh, don't look at me like you've never done stuff like that because I know you have. Uh, but I'm telling you my personal experience about things uh, that when God saved me, He took all that stuff away and I had no need for it anymore. I believe that His uh, knowledge is everything of everything in this walks of life. I begin to think about, I was studying earlier this week on uh, the creation of the world and begin to think about how God just spoke things into existence. And uh, the Bible says on the sixth day that He made man His own image and uh, said that it was very good. And we know and realize that through the sin of Adam and Eve that we've all become sinners in this thing and uh, that, that we've got to have uh, somebody to pay the sin debt that we could not pay. Uh, but I begin to think about how He formed Adam from the dust. And the Bible says that He took Adam and made him to fall into a deep sleep and took a rib out of him and caused and, and made woman. And, and so I want you to understand something that God formed each and every one of us. There's nothing in our hearts and our minds that we can hide from God. I believe that God knows 
the very intents of our hearts. I just believe that. I believe that when we think of something wicked and mean, I believe He knows about it. But you say, well, preacher, I'm laying in the bed thinking about this. I don't care where you at. It's sad to say, though, in this day of time, folks think they can hide from the presence of God, but God's everywhere. He's all-knowing. He's all-seeing. He's all-hearing. And I'll say this, the Bible says in John, that the Word was made flesh. Over in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says that the Word is sharper than any two-edged sword, able to cut to the very intents of our hearts. Let us realize today that the greatest thing we can do is have Jesus in our life. Amen. That's the greatest thing. We see that through these Scriptures they're trying to say that the psalmist here is saying praise ye the Lord. We see that he says it in several of the different verses in this text of Scripture and I realize I'm not going to get loose tonight but I just, I'm almost done. I just wanted to say a few things. Uh, but I begin to think though is if we begin to praise God in these uh, middle verses in the 8th and ninth verse, it begins to talk about how God supplies for everything. He begins to supply the rain of the clouds for the rain. He supplies the food for the ravens. Uh, the Bible says in one place that uh, that He give all these things under these things and how much more are we worth to Him. Uh, listen, uh, we're the only thing in the Scripture and, and so, listen, I, I, I've got a mama and most folks do, I guess, but I've got a mama uh, that begins and thinks that, that, that animals are going to heaven. And, and listen, I, I'm not trying to be ugly if you think that. But that's just contrary to the Scripture. They do not have a living and a breathing soul within them. Uh, the Bible says that God breathed breath into us and breathed a living soul into us, and we're the only ones He's ever done that to. Uh, now listen, He made us to worship and glorify Him. I, I just believe that. Uh, and, but my mama seems to think that cats and dogs is going to heaven. I just don't believe it. I believe uh, that through the Scriptures we can see in the book of Revelation, the Bible talks about a horse. So we might be able to say there's a horse up there, but I don't see nowhere where it says a cat and a dog's going. Uh, and I'm trying to, I'm getting off a path here just a second, but I, uh, what I'm trying to say is this, uh, that God breathed, breathed, breathed the living breath in us, and He made us different from everything else. He, he thought us uh, more about us, and He did, the Bible says He formed us in His own image and likeness. But uh, surely to goodness, if He formed us in His own image and likeness, thought enough about us to breathe the uh, breath of life into us, but uh, surely to goodness, He'll take care of us in this walks of life. But uh, this I begin to think about that word outcast. In the second verse, the Bible says, The Lord that built up Jerusalem, which is a representation of me to the church. And he goes on and says, He gathered together the outcast of Israel. I believe that's what the church has set up for. It's set up for those that are broken hearted. Those that have been outcast. Those that have been cast down. Those that don't know where to go for help. Let me tell you something I figured out a long time ago is that instead of running and thing and trying everything else, you know us, listen, I'm talking about us Christians on this one. You know who the last, where the last place is that we go and we uh, get in trouble, we go to the Lord. It's always like, Amen, that's right. Uh, the last place we go to is the Lord. Uh, but I tell you what, it ought to be the first place we go to. Uh, he's, this, he's built the church uh, for a bunch of outcasts. Uh, ain't none of us no good. Uh, we're all rotten, nut down to the core. Uh, the Bible says that none's good. No, not one. Uh, so we must have a Savior, and the only way we'll be able to get to it is through the church. Amen. It's through the church. That word outcast means to be pushed down. It means to be chased, overthrown. Listen, we see that through the Scriptures in the book of Psalms in the 40th chapter in the second verse. He says, He brought me up out of a horrible pit and set my feet upon a solid rock and established my goings. I believe the church is the rock. Amen. If the church is founded upon Jesus... And that's the most, listen, the most important thing. I appreciate everything that's going on this week, but most of all, 
I, I'm thankful that some folks miss hell. Uh, li- listen, and, and I know that, that, that a lot of folks don't like to hear about that, Brother Michael. They don't want to hear about hell. They say, well, preacher, you're going to scare us. You're going to scare our kids. I, I want you to understand that hell is a real place. Real folks is going there. And real folks is going every day. Uh, the Bible says it's according to the man to die once and then the judgment. Listen, we're going to face the judgment seat of the throne one day. And He'll either say, enter in, you good and faithful servant, or depart from Me, you work of iniquity. Uh, listen, the church is built up for outcasts just like me and just like you. Amen? See, when I had no hope in this thing, He gave me the hope I stood in need of. When there was nowhere else I can turn to, God said, turn to Me. I, I told the children this week that it doesn't matter where they get saved at. We've in this week we've seen them get saved back here in the in the hallway between the Sunday school class. We had one that got saved over here in the kitchen. Uh, we we pulled some chairs up and we began to talk, and she she got saved right there. We've had them come down here to the altar and get saved. I got saved in an old farmhouse out in the Mount Hebron community. Doesn't listen. Wherever the power is God's drawing that, that's where we can be saved at. I just believe that. Preacher, you believe that you can be outside the church? I know we can. Listen, I done told you God's everywhere. Told you He knows everything. He sees it all. But He's looking, looking. He's looking for the outcast of Israel. He's looking for those that are cast down, that's got no hope in this thing, that don't know where to turn. The Bible says He takes pleasure in them that fear Him, in those that hope in His mercy. What we listen, it's by the mercies of God that we're saved. It's by the mercies of God that we was able to come to the house of God tonight. I know it's been a long week for a lot of us, but I, I, I tell you what, I wouldn't have missed it for nothing. Yeah. Way I think about things, if I if, if I even think about missing a service. I start thinking about what I just might miss over at God's house. I'm honest about it. That's just me. Some people may not think that. But I begin to think about what I'm going to miss. And I set my hopes on seeing God show up in the church and show out. See, hope that's seen is not hope. That's what the Bible says. Hope. That, listen, if you can see something, you can't hope for it because you can see it. But see, my hope's resting in the Lord. My hope's resting in what He did for me that day over in Calvary's cross. And some 2,000 years later, He wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. And I'm, it's recorded there never to be blotted out. L- listen, I'm just ignorant enough to believe that the Bible says in one place that He's able to keep that which I've committed unto Him against that day. I just believe that He's able to keep me saved until the dying day. I believe it like this, though. My hope's in Him. Everything that we rest upon, everything that I believe, and everything that I work for, tries to go for the glory of God. And I realize and I know this, that in this walks of life, folks will tell you one thing and they'll do something else. But I, I want to rest assured to you that God will never lead you wrong. God will never tell you to go somewhere that He's not already prepared a place for it. God's always made room for His people. God's looking for those outcasts that are broken down and broken hearted. He's wanting to bind them up. Great is our Lord. And great and of great power. His understanding is infinite. I, I believe this. There's nothing in this life that we go through that God's not already seen. I believe there's nothing that we go through that the Lord's not already passed through. Preacher, I've got a bad marriage. I believe the, the answers to your problems is right here. Preacher, I'm addicted to heroin. Your answer to your problems is right here. Preacher, I'm an alcoholic. Your answer to your problems is right here. Preacher, I'm lost and I'm going to hell. Your answer is right here. There's never been a time in my life that I'd go to searching something out and looking for an answer and I wouldn't find it in God's holy word. I just believe it's precious. I believe above all things it was written by divinely inspired men. 
that God told somebody to pin this down to help me and you in this walks of life. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not, listen, a lot of people walk around ashamed of the gospel nowadays, but I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. It's through the gospel that your heart gets pricked. It's through the gospel that we find out which way to go. Preacher, you ever make mistakes? I make them all the time. People think, well, you're a preacher, you're a pastor, you're a Christian. And I'll just be honest with you. If you don't already, if you don't do it and uh, if you don't already know it, folks try to think that pastors or preachers don't make mistakes. That's the farthest thing from the truth. We're flesh and blood like everybody else is, Brother Justin. We're going to fall. We're going to make our mistakes. We're going to make them out in public sometimes and folks is going to see it. But you know what the difference is between us? The world may hold us to a higher standard. The world holds a Christian to a higher standard. You know what the only difference is between us and them? Is we've been saved by the marvelous grace of the Lord. We sought His mercy. And He gave, it, he gave us mercy. No matter what's going on in your life. If we'd seek out God first and everything, He's got the answers for it. He's got the answers. Since I've been in this walk, I've had a lot of folks come up and say, well, preacher, what do you think about this? And I've made folks mad by giving them my opinions. I do. I make people mad. I've made them mad when I told them what the Bible says about it. I'm not a very good counselor. But I know one that is. Amen. I know one that is. Through everything that we go in this walks of life, God's searching for the outcast. He wants them. He's begging for you to come. Listen, the Bible says in one place, it's not His will that any should perish, but all come to everlasting life. I just believe that. I believe it like this. The only reason He's still sitting on the throne of grace and the throne of mercy today He's waiting on somebody else to get saved. It's by His mercy and His grace. Listen, He can come and get the church and we can go home and be done with this thing. But I think He's trying to let some more folks get in. I just believe that. Preacher, I, I, what's, I, I, I got saved when I was young, but I've not been in the will of God for many years. You don't have to be like that no more. The Bible talks about the prodigal son. One of the best, one of the best stories we'll ever read through the scriptures. The Bible says that he come to himself in the hog pen. When we get tired of being in the hog pen and we come to ourselves, we'll come back to the Father's house. I just believe that. Preacher, you ever been there? I so have. I'm ashamed to say it. I'm ashamed to say it. I've been in the hog pen before. I spent a lot of time there. A lot more than I should have, a lot more than I'm wanted to. I'm, I'm not. I'm not proud of it. I heard Brother Chris Reaver said this. What the bad part is is those that are still staying in it. That's the bad part. Those are the ones that ought to be ashamed of themselves. See, God brought me back up out of that thing and dusted me off, loved me again. Start. Listen, <clears throat> He never left me. I left Him. He picked me back up, dusted me off, and put me back on his way, on my way. Right there with him. Saying, I've got you, son. You're forgiven. Let's just keep on a trucking on. Keep going. Keep moving on. That's what we got to do as Christians today. We got to keep moving on. Sometimes we get knocked down in this walks of life. Troubles and trials on every side of us. I, I know there is. But I want to encourage you tonight that if you're an outcast, come to the house of God. <clears throat> fall, fall down somewhere and begin to beg on Him and cry out to Him that He'll touch you. Maybe He'll restore the joys of His salvation. That's what, when David got off in sin one time, he said, Lord, restore to me the joys of Thy salvation. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying David was off away from God. 
David knew where his joy come from. It's not all, listen, it's not always a bed of roses. I'm trying to stop. It's not always a bed of roses on the slopes of life. It gets rough sometimes. It gets hard. We don't always understand why we do what we do sometimes. But I know this much. God's got joy for us. He'll give us something this world cannot offer down deep on the inside of our soul. I tried to fill that void up with anything and everything I can get my hands on. I, I, listen, if, if y'all knew half the stuff I'd done, you'd probably run me off. God's good. God's just that good. I thought I could hide from them. I did. Can't hide from them. Thought I knew it all. Figured out I didn't know nothing. I'm a prideful man. I'm just being honest with you. I'm a prideful man. I don't like to admit when I'm wrong. But you know what salvation is? It's saying you can't do it. It's saying you was wrong. It's given over to the authority of God in your life. That's what salvation is. Preacher, is everything going to be good for me? It won't. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you it is. It's going to be. But I know this much. There's grace for every need. Grace is free, unmerited favor of God. He's got grace for His people, don't He? He's got grace. When we feel like we can't go on no further, He'll give us the strength to keep moving on. He's just that good. He's just that good. Everybody stand up. I'm done. I didn't aim to go that long. I don't know where you stand at in life today. I don't. I'm not trying to scare you. But I pray the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and shows you where you're at in your life with God. 431 is one of the busiest highways you'll ever get on. I do a lot of traveling in my job up to northeast corner of Tennessee, all the way down to South Alabama, over in Georgia, Mississippi. I travel all over the place. And 431 is probably one of the worst roads I'll ever come across, especially on a Friday afternoon. There's more accidents on that road probably. Listen, I know that road runs all the way down to South Alabama to a place called Dothan. And there's an intersection down there in Dothan. They say it's one of the deadliest intersections in the country. We're talking about 431. So I'm, I'm pretty confident to say this. There's probably more deaths on 431 in the state of Alabama than there is anywhere else. And most of us is fixing to jump right back on it. Most of us are fixing to go out there and get either cross it, go down it one way or another. If God called you out of this life tonight, are you ready? He knows where you are. He's the only one with the power to save you. It's through what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross. He's the only one. Brianna, Bubba, come come up here, please. Bubba, come up here, please. <clears throat> If you met the Lord tonight, how would it go? How, how would it go? How, how would it, what would He say? Would He say, depart from me? Or would He say, ye enter in, you good and faithful servant? So for me, I know what He's going to say. So I've been faithful over a few things. Notice I said few. He's going to tell me to enter in. But those that's never been saved, he's going to say, depart from me, for I never 
knew you. The Bible says you'll be cast into a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Preacher, you're trying to scare me. No, I'm trying to tell you the truth. I, I know that folks in this walks of life don't want people to tell you about hell no more. But it's still the truth. That rich man that the Lord talked about, he said there was a certain rich man that fared sumptuously every day. He had everything in this walks of life he could ask for. The Bible says he died and was buried and lifted his eyes up in hell. I don't know how you see that scripture, but me, I believe there was a little or a rich man. The Lord didn't say that was a parable. He said there was a certain rich man. I believe today, as we're fixing to give an altar call, that rich man's looking up from the depths of hell, wishing he had one more opportunity. He's been there for thousands of years. You know what else? He'll be there for thousands of more. The Lord is great. His power is all powerful. He knows it all. God's been good to me in my life. He gave me two beautiful children. He gave me a wife. He gave me a home. I've got cars to drive. But none of that matters. There's a song that says, I'd rather have a shack by the side of the road than have all the riches and gold. You give me Jesus and you can take everything else. As they sing, they're going to sing, God's been good. God's been good. I want, I want to give you an opportunity to come pray. Can you say that God's been good to you in your life? And, and let me go a step further on this. I'm trying to stop. God's already been good to you. Whether you're lost or you're saved, you're backslid, no matter where you're at, God's already been good to you. Is He not worthy to be praised for He's looking for the outcast of Israel. He won't see outcast. Those that have no hope, put your hope in Him.